get a lot of questions on the Nicky Norton white tile method to make things like these uh, ceramic tile coasters, which are just uh, uh, tiles from your home store that you uh, can either coat with titanium dioxide or paint on. We'll get into that. But get a lot of questions on how do you come up with the settings. And, you know, I, I found the Nicky Norton test grid online and it's. I've, I've got a 40 watt laser and it's just blasting. You know, I, I can't get a, a good setting out of it. I'm going to show you here in this video how to deal with that. I'm going to revisit the what's called the Nicky Norton white tile test, white tile method, and the test grid. And here's one here from uh, long ago. This is from a 10 watt atom stack, which gives you an idea of what settings to use when you are engraving on these ceramic tiles. Of course you can't just grab a tile and throw it on and engrave on it. You need to coat it with either a uh, white spray paint like Rust-Oleum Matte White is what I use. It has to have a high titanium dioxide content or if you don't want to mess around with having to wash it back off with acetone when you're done you can use titanium oxide powder dissolved, well not dissolved but carried in um, hydropropyl alcohol, you spray that on, let it dry, and then you can engrave through that and then you can just wash it off with water. The disadvantage with that is don't touch the top of the tile because it, the titanium dioxide does not actually stick to it. I know some people will mix a little glue in with it. Uh, I've never tried that. I've just done the titanium dioxide and alcohol and make sure there's no wind and handle it only by the edges. But anyway, so what you go do is you look at your test grid and that's the way you can get your power and speed to do your engraving if you're making coasters or um, well, hold this a little better, emblems, that type of thing. Uh, the Nicky Norton white tile test grid is available all over the internet. It's, there's a lot of places you can download it. But when it was made, it was designed for 5 watt lasers. So, uh, using it with a 10 watt, yeah, that works fine. Uh, this one here was, you know, Adam Stack, 10 watt. I was on the 10 watt laser. You can even kind of push it up to 20 watt. When you get into 30 watt and 40 watt, it will just burn. And you don't really get a good uh, idea here. So I'm going to go on the computer, I'm going to show you a way to do this from Lightburn using their material test grid. It's actually very easy. So here I'm in light burn and in the background I have the original Nicky Norton white tile test file open which is absolutely perfect for a 5, 10, even a 20 watt laser. When you get into the 30 or 40 watt ones this is uh, like way overkill. So you can either go through and edit all that yourself or you can make your own. And to make your own is actually quite easy. Um, I have this running right now, so I can't close this, but right up here where there's laser tools, uh, it'll drop down and tell you that you can't have more than one instance of light burn open. Okay, we'll go up here to laser tools. Material test. And this little window here will pop up. So you need to edit your material settings. And I'm going to be doing this on a 40 watt laser. Of course, we only want one pass. And we want this to be fill and not lining. And my minimum speed for this, I think I will go about 1,000 millimeters per minute. And we can edit the rest of that in uh, when we get back into the other little box. Edit your text setting. 8,000 millimeters per minute, 10% power probably wouldn't even show up. So as a Yes, here I'm going to take this down to about 1500 millimeters per minute. And yeah, maximum power 100. And I'll leave the air assist on. And that is going to be, it doesn't need to be offset fill, we'll make that fill. There we go. So now we're back to here. We want to Minimum speed here, I think, is for a 40 watt laser. We're going to go to probably 600 millimeters per minute. I'll have to look and see what I did on my other one there. 
that one is 1,000 millimeters per minute. So you can edit all of this right here. So I'm going with a minimum of 1,000 millimeters per minute, a maximum of 5,000 millimeters per minute. Height is 5 millimeter, and so on here. Uh, that's for the vertical and horizontal columns. Our power is going to be from 10 to 100 percent. 10 rows, so it would be 10% uh, increments. And there again, 5 millimeter. We're making little 5 millimeter squares. So what I can do here now is uh, I'll hit frame so I can frame this on my uh, laser bed. Of course, make sure you focus first and then just hit start. And you can do a preview here. This takes 28 minutes and 24 seconds. And I have this particular one running right now. And I just lost my connection. Hate it when that happens. Okay, start over. So as you can see, it happens to the best of us. That USB cable, I just swapped it in for another one. So we'll get back up here and we'll do this over material test. And I'm going to change it, uh, since I got to look at this a little bit closer, I'm going to speed this one here way up. Not on my text, I'm going to actually double that. That was burning a little hot there. And here, I'm going to go with a minimum of 1,000, I think. And a maximum of 3,000. Look at this again, make sure it's just one pass. And we're in the fill mode, so then I'll frame this. And I'll hit start, and away we go, and hopefully this time I won't have that problem. Okay, so as you can see, it happens to the best of us. Had a, must have had a bad USB cable, I didn't even screw with it, I just grab another one and dump that one in the trash. Uh, don't put bad cables back in the drawer because you'll end up grabbing it again and then you'll have another failure somewhere. But we're at it again here, so this takes uh, 28 minutes, 29 seconds. So what am I starting with here? These are uh, ceramic tiles you can buy at your home store. They're inex relatively inexpensive. Uh, this one needs to be, this one has a chip out of it. Uh, it would be good for a test one. So this has not been coated with paint yet. This here has two coats of Rust-Oleum matte white on it, as do these, and this is where my uh, laser USB cable failed as I was partway into this. And once uh, everything's engraved, then you uh, clean off the paint with uh, acetone. The laser I'm doing this on for this demonstration here is a longer B1 with the 40-watt uh, head on it. And something to keep in mind, even though there is a shield on there, if you're going to be looking at that, put your uh, eye protection on because even though there is a shield, that is extremely bright out of there. Um, I don't keep these on if I'm not looking right at it. If I'm, for example, just looking up here and not seeing that down there at all, then I'll, I'll take these and pop them up like so, so I don't look like some alien. But something to keep in mind, if you're going to be looking at that, have your eye protection on. Okay, yes, there is background noise because this is not a quiet laser, and that's what you're hearing. Is uh, this right here? It's a laser head. So there's the one we just made. Of course, this will get cleaned with uh, acetone, and we'll get a better idea of it. Now, what I'm going to do is take a tile and run the modified original Nicky Norton white tile test. I'm sure, I've got a coated tile there, or it's going to show up. So I'll get this in here and get that frame. Okay, so what if you wanted to edit the original Norton method tile test pattern? How would you do that? Well, actually it would be pretty easy. You would have to uh, change your text, of course. So instead of this being 250, let's say we're going to make it 1000. We'll make the next one 1500. I'll start, start moving these around here. 3000 and so on down the line. You get the idea of what I'm doing there. So I'm going to fill them in, then I'll come back and show you how to make the other changes. And yeah, once you have your numbers changed, you have to go here to Cuts and Layers. So you look here, you know, that was uh, originally at 250 at 100%. We're going to change that from 250 to 1,000. 
and that will now be 1500 and that will now be 2000 and that will now be 2500 that will be 3000 and then we go to 4000 or well 3500 and 4000 4500 5000 and 5500 Now for our font, I'm going to take this to 2,000. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, if you're not familiar with uh, shape properties, how this knows to go from 100% down to 20%. If you click on one of these shapes, well, we're going to take this one right here, and then right-click on it, click on Show Properties, this will come up over here. It gives you your shape property. So your power scale for this is 80%. If you follow down the line there, that's 80%. So that's the way, if you're just curious of how that's done, or if you're creating your own from scratch, that's how you would set your shape properties to step the power down. So I'm going to save this. Norton Tile Test Grid 1. And we just might run this. Okay, get everything in place and have that frame. So we'll start this. And the time to in for this one is 38 minutes and 35 seconds. For there, I'm going to take this original one here. We're going to drop it in the acetone. And we'll let it soak for a few seconds. Now I'm going to take this out and I got a little bit of paint on there yet. I'll just give this a little rub. A little acetone on the rag. So there's our test tile, and as you can see, this over here was just way too hot. But we can get a good idea of what is going to be best to make one by looking over in here. So once you have one of these made, now you can pick which gives you the best looking square as far as uh, being true black. And in this particular case, I would actually pick uh, 60% power at 3,000 millimeters per minute. And you can also use that for an image too if you're uh, going to be doing an image and you need to know some kind of baseline of what your maximum power should be. Uh, I would go with 60% uh, maximum power and a maximum speed of 3,000 millimeters per minute. That's just, it'll give you an idea and if you uh, buy your tiles at let's say Lowe's uh, this time and then next time you go buy your tiles at let's say Home Depot you're going to want to do a test again because not all tiles engrave the same. And as you can see down here this is just way too hot. So I could have actually increased my speeds even higher if I would have wanted to. I mean you get a decent looking uh, engrave right here at 10 percent power at 1000 millimeters per minute. And after this one's done, this is the uh, modified original Nicky Norton uh, pattern. We'll uh, take a look at it and compare it with uh, the tile that I was created in Lightburn. So there's our other grid. I'm going to turn this off to make it a little quieter in here. Ah, much better. So I'll get this one cleaned with acetone, and then we'll compare the two. Okay, putting these side by side here, as I, oh, I got a little paint flake laying on that one. Uh, as I mentioned on the first one we did that we created in light burn, I think my best look is going to be at 60% power and at 3,000 millimeters per minute. Now using the uh, Nicky Norton uh, test grid that I just modified, Again, I'm looking at there's 3,000 millimeters per minute, there's 60% power. That's going to give me my darkest, best look without being over engraved. If you over engrave, it's going to get real grainy like this up here or like this down here. So, there's two different ways to do this test grid. You can either do the modified Nicky Norton original. Or you can actually do the uh, Nicky Norton original as well. Or you can make your own light burn. And this isn't just for tiles. You, 
um, any type of material you're using, it, that's a handy little utility in there to make yourself a test grid. And if you don't want to do fill, you can do lines. And uh, if, for example, if you wanted to set it up to do figure out how to cut through wood, you would use lines and X number of passes and put some settings in there and run a test pattern. That's how we determine uh, what we're going to use for projects. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Of course, always looking for subscribers like every YouTuber is. Thanks for watching. I'm Roger in the shop. See you on the next one.